Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. This is my friends at Yarnspirations.com. Today we're going to do the fade out knit scarf. This is for absolute beginners that you see. I'm going to be teaching it from an absolute uh, beginner's point of view with a lot of tips today. Now I've been working on a sample here using Karen uh, Colorama Halo. This is called Vanilla Frost, the one I'm working on. And this is referred to as a tube scarf. So you just go around and around in a circle. And what happens is at the end, you're going to close it off just by just uh, tying it off here and that will close off the tube and what happens is, is that you get two layers of scarf when you close that off so it's double the thickness. So what we have here is that this is called Karen Colorama Halo. It's not referring to angel wings or anything like that but when there is extra where there's a layer of like almost eyelash or it's almost like brushed look that's referred to as a halo and so sometimes people use regular yarn and then they kind of just and it creates like these fuzzies, that's called a halo. So this is built right into the yarn. On a microscopic level, this helps you keep warmer because the heat of your retention stays within the halo as well as the project itself and is actually really quite beneficial. This is a nice easy one where you're just going to go in a continuous circle over and over and over. And what you're going to do is just work your way from one side of the year ogo to the other. So you just keep on going and that's why it's transitioning in color. So it's one ogo and you can see on the model here, it's light here and then as it goes, it goes and goes, it gets darker by the end. So I found for myself, I was really mentally interested in this because I wanna see how the colors are going to work their way out. And so basically one ogo is one scarf and no big deal. The first step you're going to do, and I'm not going to put it in today's tutorial, but is to make a tassel. There's tutorials available on our channel for tassel making. So what's happening here is that the dark tassel here is put to the light end and the light tassel is here put to the dark end. So you're thinking, well, okay, if you go from one side of the elbow to the other, will you have that yarn left over? No. What you have to do is you have to make these tassels first. And so use the end of the one elbow to make the blue and then use the other end to make the light color here and therefore then you just knit the entire rest of the ogo so that you have it. So because you're going in a continuous circle over and over and over, it really doesn't matter how long your scarf is gonna be because you've already saved your um, yarn for the tassels and you made your tassels in advance. There's also instructions here. So in today's tutorial, we're gonna get going. We're gonna need a six millimeter um, circular knitting needles with a 16 inch uh, long cord and so it's these cords that are holding your yarn while you're not using it and so because you're going in a continuous circle you just basically are knitting from one side to the other and it's just rotating on its own and you'll notice that rotating on your lap as you go and you're just working your way in a continuous circle. So I'm going to start off with some different yarn but I'm going to bring it back to this project at the end of the tutorial to show you how to finish. So here on page number two, we're going to get ourselves started. It says go from the lightest to the dark shade. So after you make your tassels, if you want that, you are going to go from the light all the way to the dark. You can decide to go either way. It doesn't really matter to me in any way. So um, you can let me know in the comments. So you're going to go from light to dark or dark to light. What we have, we're going to start off with 45 um, cast on stitches, which I would demonstrate from a beginner's point of view. If you don't need my help on that, it's just 45 stitches. And then we're going to continue go in around and around the round. You don't need to record how many rounds you do. You just keep on going and going. And as you uh, pass every round, you're going to get longer and longer and longer. So knitting does take a while to do, but the results of it, as you can see, are just absolutely fantastic. Once you get to the very end of the ogo or close to it, you want about 12 inches of yarn left over and then you're gonna use it to be able to close it off. So without further ado, we're gonna start with our knitting needles and we're gonna get ourselves cast on with a long tail cast on today. So let's begin and I need you to start by pulling about three feet of yarn out of the yarn ball itself. It's a little generous, but let's just go with it, we're beginners. And this is where I wanna put my slip knot. So just wrap it around your finger twice. So this is going to the yarn ball here. This is the tail end over here. So wrap around your finger twice. And I want you to take the last one here and put it up over top. And then take the new last one and go right up over top of the finger. And that is your slip knot that will start this whole thing. I will demonstrate again. So just wrap the yarn. This is going to the yarn ball. This is the tail end. This is the back and this is the front. Take the back over the front loop 
that you see, but not over top of the finger. And then take the new back one, pull it up and go over top of the finger. We have tutorials available on YouTube if you ever need to know just basics like this. And then what I need you to do is that we are going to grab our knitting needles that are circular. And I want you to put them together and sandwich them like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to create the cast on using the concept of making the stitches um, looser so it's a lot easier for you. And I want you to put the slip knot onto the needle. Okay. And pull the strand so that it's tight. Okay, so you can still wiggle it, you can move it, but it's not loose that it's going to fall off if you point it down. We're now going to position, th this is considered one of 45, so now I want you to position the yarn in, in front of your body. And if you want to start off on a table, it might be easier for you. You can decide. Now that this is on the needles, this is going to the yarn ball, this is your tail end right here. So now what we want to do is put our fingers down and it's easier on a table I found in the very beginning when I'm starting to learn this. And I want you to keep the needles so that they're uh, um, in this position so I'm sitting directly behind. Um, I've been doing it like this and it pulls it off. So now, and I've also put my finger here so that this is preventing it from coming off the needles as well. So now put your fingers down and like this, like you're pinching something and move your hand closer to the needles. And as you get underneath the strands, put it over top of your finger and your thumb. Using your three fingers here, when you rotate, this hand is gonna come down and this hand comes up pro to provide tension. And you're gonna rotate using the three fingers to grab those strands like that. Let's demonstrate again. Yarn ball, tail end, down and pinch and move so that it catches underneath of the two strands. One will be under your finger, the other under your thumb. Using your three fingers, when you pull up this hand and start rotating, this hand will go down to provide tension and you are going to wrap your three fingers around the two strands. Now let's begin to cast on. We need to get this, ne these needles, both of them, and just watch what we do. And you'll, I'll demonstrate it several times. You're going to use both needles as if they're one unit and just come to the palm of your hand. And you are just going to move up and capture the, the strand like this. Keep in tension, you now need to rotate your hand slightly and wrap the needles around the finger one in front. When you're ready, you can release your finger out, okay? And use your thumb and push this one over top of the needles. And that is a new stitch. And you're just gonna pull back your hand and that will tighten and create the new stitch. You don't need to keep resetting your hand every time, but I will reset again. And I'm just going to go in and reposition. Notice that I'm using my pointer finger over here to hold the stitches from sliding off. So I'm going to glide from my palm up and catch. And I'm going to use my finger and wrap around and release my finger out and use my thumb and push the one that was on the thumb over and pull tight. So let's show again. So you're coming up to the palm, collect, rotate your hand, wrap around, and then use your thumb to push over. Okay, so you're gonna keep on going. Sorry, let's 
Salty's having some water. It's my dog, if you didn't know who Salty was. So you're just gonna keep in this formation. And I know what you're thinking, well, you're going over two needles, what's up with that? You'll see that in a few moments. I want you to get about 10 loops on here so we can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So as soon as you get 10, we're gonna do something slightly different. So I wanna keep on going until I see about 10. And you're gonna get into rhythm pretty quickly, I think, even as a non-crocheter or a non-knitter, you may be able to get onto this pretty quick. You can let me know in the comments how you're doing. So as soon as I can count 10 loops, those are 10 stitches, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I want you to release just one needle out of this. And so I'm going to push the bottom out. And so what you've just done now with this type of cast on is that these stitches are nice and loose, just the way you want it, but you're not done. So now you need to put them together and sandwich again. Like this. You don't wanna leave both needles in for the entire cast on. And so you wanna reset your hand again and start casting on more. And so these cast ons will be around the two needles again. So you wanna do about 10 or so stitches and you'll get used to it on how many stitches you should put onto both needles before you release just one. And so I find that this allows the stitches to be more flexible in the very beginning. I prefer a twist and transfer, but that twist and transfer has no flexibility until you get to the next round and it makes it virtually impossible to do knitting in the round with that particular concept. Okay, so I can see one, two, three, and you know, you just can go as many as you want. So how many stitches do we need to start the scarf? It was 45. So your goal is, is to end up with 45 um, stitches. And once you think you have enough, again, release the bottom one out and then keep on building yours until you can get 45 of these cast on loops. And I'll be right back in a moment. So now that I've cast on 45 stitches, this is going to the yarn ball. This is the tail end and the amount of yarn that's left over is about right in order for you to finish off the first side when you get to it at the end of your project. What you can do now is that we need to go in a complete round and I noticed that it's not going all the way around, which is fine because it will stretch. Before you can begin though, you're in the wrong formation of the way that you're looking at it. So I want you to carefully pick up your project and I want you to turn it over. This is called knitting in the round. So just turn it over so that the strand from the yarn ball is going over here. Okay, so it's going, and then the tail end, just kind of keep it out of the way so it's not in your way here. So if it's twisted in any weird way, you wanna make sure that you just leave that tail end so it's not interfering with anything. So I positioned it so the tail end's down here so it's not in my way. So you wanna make sure that the bottom of this is facing in the same direction. So pretend it's like a horseshoe and just make sure that the bottom all looks like it's doing a horseshoe. Carefully now pick up your knitting needles and just move just to the tip and use your finger to prevent it from sliding off. And on the other side, just use your hand and just start sliding those stitches down and around to the other side so that the end stitch gets close to the top. In the first round, it's gonna be a buckling in, a, in many ways, but in the next round that we're about to do, you'll notice that it will stabilize. We're gonna only do the knit stitch for this entire project. So to do this, we are going to stick the needle here on the right into the loop on the left. And when you go in, you wanna come in from a diagonal from the bottom and put the needle inside that same loop, but on the back side. 
and I want you to just kind of pinch and hold because we haven't uh, determined how you're going to hold your yarn. The way that I like to hold my yarn, you can do a pinch and throw method where you just pinch and toss over, but I like to wrap it in my hand so I don't have to worry about uh, doing extra motion. So I use my pinky and I'm going to just scoop it and I'll show you this three times. So I want to scoop it and twist once. I want to open up my hand and come in front of the next two fingers. And then I want to use my final finger as the top, like this. So it's wrapped around my pinky. It's in front of the next two fingers and then it's around the back of the top pointer finger. Let's demonstrate again. So you're going to scoop and wrap and come in front of your hand like this and then just use this finger and push back one more last time so you're going to just scoop and come in front of your next two fingers and come behind your pointer finger like this it's important that the yarn is coming from this direction so that when it pulls into my hand, it doesn't pull out of my hand, but it pulls towards the crease of where my fingers uh, meet the palm of my hand. We're going to then use this strand here and you're going to wrap around only the back needle. And when you do that, you are going to lower down the back needle to the point where it's capturing onto the yarn that you just wrapped. And then you are going to push up. Once you confirm that it's pushed up, you are just going to use your hands and just take that loop that is on this needle here and just take it right off. Because this is the very first stitch, I want you before you move any further to pull tight on this to tighten it up. The first one will always be loose. So unless you tighten it like that. Now that you've done that, the remaining of this entire project is just the knit stitch. So you just come into the next loop, you come onto the back side, yarn over. So you just wrap the back needle only, come back down, and scoop. So because we're knitting in the round, what's going to happen is that the stitches are going to transfer from this needle that I'm about to pick up, I'm doing the knit stitch on, to this needle. So the entire project keeps rotating around the, 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 the needles, right? So as I pick up and I move to the other needle, everything is just kind of coming in line. So just think of it like a conveyor belt. And so your hands are doing the motion of the work as it pushes off. And you're going to end up with a lot of stitches underneath your hand. So you just got to push them and they just keep on rotating around and they'll be coming back around when you get all the way around and you're just doing a knit stitch. So I'm coming back around and you're noticing that the first stitches look like this. Do not worry. Do not panic. It is part of the process. So when you're coming back around, this round is the very first time you're ever circling. And so this one will stabilize that really quick. So continuing around right to the very end. And I can tell by the next stitch that I've already, and that's the first, and I can tell by the tail where it's ending, that is the first round is complete. So now you're just gonna go continually around. And so as this builds out, you'll notice that the tension of this will just work itself out. The first part of this will start curling up a little bit, but once you get enough weight on it, you'll notice that it will be nice and flat. And this is referred to as the stocking knit stitch and you'll have this beautiful work on this side and on the other side of this, which was the inside, it looks like it's a, it's a garter stitch. So let's go to the end of this um, project and show you how to finish off. So keeping moving on this thing, we have our beginning tail that we have, and then we're gonna be using that beginning tail to close off by just pulling it shut. And then you're going to then use this. So when you're ready to cast off and completely finish, what we're going to do is we're not going to do a bind off edge. We're just going to just use this yarn to be able to collect all the loops. So once you're happy with it and you have the length you want, just simply trim this yarn and don't do anything crazy yet. 
Now I want to grab a tapestry needle. So putting the yarn through a tapestry needle, we are going to transfer all of the stitches onto this strand here. So right where we're finished right here, we're going to start as if we're going to continue to knit and you're just going to just pick up the loops and slide them onto your, your needle. So you can pick up as many as you can at the same time if you want to. And so I like to pull through, okay? And then I like to push off. So I just like to push the ones that I pulled through off. And so they're not falling apart or coming out, they're just resting on top of that strand. So you're just gonna work your way all the way around the needles, just collecting these loops and pushing them off. And eventually they'll all be on that strand when you get all the way around. So please do that and I'll be back in a moment. So I'm coming all the way around and I'm just continuing to transfer and I'm gonna get myself right to the very end and put the remaining on. So I just removed the knitting needles, everything is now on. So this yarn here is delicate in the sense that if you pull too tight, it will snap. So you need to make sure that you're firm about it, but not crazy to the point where you're being too rushed. And so you're just gonna pull on it and the whole top of this that's open is going to close. Make sure that you twist it so that the good side is facing out and continue to pull. Okay, so it's done. So I like to, where it's coming out, I like to go completely the opposite across. And then I like to go in the cross formation like this. And that's all I like to do. I don't want to do any more than that. So now I'm going to make sure this ties into a knot itself. And do a knot. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to put this strand inside. So just open it up with your hands. And you can tell, I can tell by wiggling it that it's not touching anything. And I'm just going to come out somewhere deep down here. And pull it so that it's no more is on the outside. Then I want to stretch it. And then that's where I want to trim. And so therefore the loose end is inside, just like that. So you're going to go back to your original and where you left the long tail you're going to do this to be able to um, pull it together. So you're just gonna work your way around the outside. Now, if you were not watching, if I was not filming this, I would have done this much earlier uh, than waited so long because I just, it was my thing. So you're just gonna work your way around the outside, just in and out of just collecting. And then once you get all the way back around, you're gonna just pull it shut and do the exact same thing. And so you just go all the way around using that strand until you get back to where you started. Okay, so once it's all the way around, you just pull and it will close this end off as well. And like where it's coming out, I wanna go completely across. And some people like pom-poms, other people don't. It's, it's really a personal choice. Um, I love pom-poms, I, I like the tassels, but your application on how you're using your scarf is going to matter. I find in craft shows people like options to be able to remove a pom-pom. Um, I'm not sure what's up with North America, not liking pom-poms as much as other countries, but to each their own. Once you have that secured, you just pull it open, push it inside. I can wiggle it. I know it's not touching anything. Come deep down. Pull on it. And then that's where I want to cut it pull, make it sure it disappears on the inside. And that would be how you finish the start. So you can see it would look like that. Okay, and then you'll just attach your tassels or your pom-poms to the end. Have a good one. We hope to see you again real soon.